Hello and welcome to this Open University video tutorial designed to supplement the module T189 Digital Photography. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at two tools for making regional changes to photographs. These tools are located under the histogram in the develop module adjacent to the red eye tool. The first is the gradient filter tool and the second is the adjustment brush. We'll start by looking at the gradient filter and I'll start by giving you an overview of the tool's functions. You'll notice that I'm working on a neutral grey image here, just to demonstrate the core functions of the tool. I'll start by clicking on the tool, which opens up its control panel. This contains the effects that you can apply with the gradient filter. We'll get into some of these later on, but the most common use of the gradient filter is when matched with the exposure slider here. I'll just choose an exposure value of around 3. When I bring my mouse up to the image, you'll notice that the mouse pointer is a crosshair or plus symbol. I apply the gradient filter by clicking and dragging over the area that I want to affect. You can instantly see what the filter has done. At the top, the exposure has been increased, so the grey has become white. But the tool gradually reduces in effect over the whole image, so the bottom of the image is mostly unaffected. In the histogram to reflect this, you can see that we have the neutral grey spike and then a gradual range of tones moving towards white. Once you've applied the filter, you can use this pin here to move the centre of the filter around, which allows you to change the affected area. You can see what effect this has here. I'll return to the centre of the image. You'll notice that there are some white bars at the top and bottom of the filter area, which are the boundaries within which the filter has an effect. You can adjust these by clicking and dragging to shrink the area of effect. So here you can have an effect that is essentially all white at the top, with a very quick graduation into grey at the bottom. In the histogram, you can see that there's a lot less of the tones in between grey and white now. The central line to the left and right of the pin allows me to rotate the effect. You can see the mouse pointer reflects this option, and if I click, I can rotate it however I want. There we go, let's just drag that out a little. You can add more graduated filters if you like. I simply come over to the tool panel and click on New. I'll select a negative exposure value this time, and I'll apply that. You can see that we get an interesting effect here, although not very useful. You'll see that the pin for the newly added filter is selected and I can adjust the properties of that filter. To adjust the other filter you simply click on that pin and then you can adjust that however you want. You can also make alterations to the settings in the tool panel for any selected filter. Any of these settings can be changed so long as you've selected the correct filter. Select the pin that you want, and then adjust the slider to alter the effect that you want. So I can select this pin, and change the exposure value. And there we go. This is all very well, but it's not very useful playing with a boring grey image like this. To see a more practical example of this, let's move on to the next image here. This photo of a lake at sunset demonstrates a classic issue with overexposed sky. The camera couldn't cope with the range of tones in the scene, and the sky ends up looking a little washed out. The highlights in the clouds here are definitely overexposed, and the whole scene should be a little bit more dramatic to evoke the feelings of the sunset. You've already seen that we can use the tonal adjustment tools to recover overexposure like this, but the graduated filter gives us another way to approach this problem. I'm going to choose an exposure value of about minus one in the gradient filter panel here and I'll drag and apply that over the whole image. You can see that it's instantly darkened the sky here, but it's had less of an effect on the lower half of the photo, because of the graduated way that the tool works. I'll just flick the tool off, and on, and I hope that you can appreciate the difference that it's made. I can adjust the tool to reduce the gradient, making the scene even more dramatic. perhaps a little more, and I'll darken the effect even further. Again, looking at before and after. 
I think that this has had a really dramatic effect, although the top of the image is perhaps a little bit too underexposed now. Let's move on and have a look at the effect of the other sliders here, starting with the contrast slider. I can decrease or increase the contrast. Again, that's applied in a gradual fashion. I'll reset that. I can adjust the highlights, so I could bring the highlights down, which has affected the clouds here. And I could perhaps adjust the exposure a little, so we don't have quite such a dark area in the sky here. You can see that it's massively improved from the original. I really like the warmth of these orange hues here. This is a really great effect. In a scene that needs shadow adjustments, we could adjust those, but it's not really appropriate here. We can adjust the clarity of an image, softening it or giving it more punch. Again, I'll reset that. We can also adjust the saturation, so we could have the top of the image black and white with the bottom still in colour. Or we could have a massively increased saturation in the sky. We can also adjust the sharpness of details in the scene, so I can unsharpen or sharpen the image as I choose. We also have the noise reduction tool, which can be very useful, especially when you've made some exposure adjustments to your image. Such adjustments can increase the noise in your image. So I can go ahead and select a fairly high value of noise reduction. The beauty of using this in the graduated filter is that it will have reduced the noise in the top of the image, but the lower half will be less affected. So the softening effect of the noise reduction won't adversely affect the detail in the water here. Underneath noise reduction, we have a slider called Moiré. I'm going to leave that and show you this effect later. The final thing you can apply to the graduated filter is the white balance adjustments. So I could, for instance, make the sky a cold shade of blue. Or very warm and orange. And I can also adjust the tint to be more green. Or more magenta. So I hope you appreciate the power of the graduated filter. It can allow you to apply a wide range of effects in a graduated way over your photos. As ever, subtlety is key unless you're deliberately going for a very creative effect. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at the other regional adjustment tool, the adjustment brush. <laughs>